The NBA trade deadline is officially over, and I mean, wow, we saw so many unexpected trades going down, such as KD going to the Suns, Kyrie going to the Mavericks, and Westbrook going to the Jazz. For the Golden State Warriors, despite really pulling trades before the trade deadline, swapped James Wiseman for Gary Payton II. If you guys want a full breakdown of that trade, check out my video yesterday and I will leave a link of that in the description box down below. Now, the trade deadline is officially over, but there is still a way for teams to get better, and I'm talking about the buyout market. From the trade yesterday, the Warriors actually saved a lot of money. According to Woj quote, the Warriors will save roughly $7 million in luxury tax this year on today's trades and $30 million in the 2023-2024 season. This basically means that the team has a bit more flexibility financially to acquire players in the bio market. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a few bio candidates who can boost the Warriors' chance to compete for the championship. So with that being said, let's show the intro. Yo, what's up guys, Jason here back with another video. If it's your first time watching, I make NBA content every single day. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want daily NBA news and rumors on your feed. Now, from the trade yesterday, the Warriors lost a bit of depth in their already lacking front core, but of course, in exchange, they gained some major upgrade in the backcourt with GP2. With that being said, all the candidates we're talking about today will be focusing on dressing the need for the Warriors in their front court. Starting off with number one on this list, we have Will Barton of the Washington Wizards. According to NBA insider Adrian Wojnowski, quote, ESPN sources, the Wizards are working on a contract buyout for veteran guard forward Will Barton, allowing him to become a free agent. Barton 32 has had a limited role with Washington this season, but started 71 games and averaged 14.7 points for the Nuggets a season ago. This year, Barton didn't get much opportunity on the court as before. He is only averaging about 7.7 .7 points, 2.8 rebounds, and 2.4 assists per game, but shooting at nicely 38% behind the arc. Right off the bat, we can see that Barton's shooting will indeed help out the Warriors at the small forward position. As of right now, there isn't much depth behind Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga, especially since sometimes Kaminga has to play the dream on Green Row as the power forward position. Now, looking at Barton's time with the Nuggets, where he was constantly playing 30 plus minutes per game, he's averaging about 14 points, 5 rebounds, 3.3 assists, and almost 1 steal per game, while shooting 36.2% behind the arc. With the fact that contract after bow is usually way lower, and the production Barton will still create if you give him time on the court, the Warriors should no doubt target this veteran not only as an additional depth on the bench, but also as a mentor to young guys like Kaminga and Moses Moody, who plays almost a similar role as Barton. Moving on, number two on this list is Dwayne Dedman, formerly of the Miami Heat and currently of the San Antonio Spurs. According to NBA reporter Sham Stranias, quote, the Miami Heat are trading center Dwayne Dedman and a second round pick to the San Antonio Spurs, sources tell The Athletic and Stadium. We later learn that the Heat are receiving cash consideration and the second round picks the Spurs will receive will be a 2028 Heat second rounder. Now, looking at the entire Spurs roster, this team is under a clear rebuilding stage and is filled with young players. This year, Denman has a cap hit of $4.7 million. For the Spurs, there is really no point in keeping Denman. However, the Warriors can get some help from him. This year, while only playing about 12 minutes per game for the Heat, he's averaging 5.7 points and 3.6 rebounds per game while shooting about 30% behind the arc. Some might say that the Warriors can't have him on the court for a long time because he's already 33 years old, but hear me out. The Warriors only need him for about 15 minutes per game for Kevon Looney to rest. All Demon needs to do is grab those rebounds, set all the screens, and knock down those open shots. At the same time, Deadman has a 108.3 defensive rating this season, and I totally feel good about putting him on the defensive side. Moving on, we have number 3 on this list, Serge Ibaka. Just yesterday, he was traded to the Indiana Pacers. Now, take a quick look at this trade from the Pacers Twitter account, quote, We have acquired Jordan Nawara, George Hill, Serge Ibaka, and three for the second round picks from Milwaukee, as well as the cash consideration from Brooklyn as part of a four-team trade. 
This year with the Bucks, Ibaka was averaging only 4.1 points and 2.8 rebounds per game, while shooting 33.3 percent behind the arc. The Bucks only play him for about 12 minutes per game. Once again, this can be related to the previous candidate Dwayne Dedman. The Warriors only need him for about 10-15 minutes per game for Kevon Looney to rest. Unlike Dedman or Kevon Looney, Ibaka is a career 36% three-point shooter. While he's on the court, the opposing team can't leave him wide open, like how the team would defend Kevon Looney or Dwayne Dedman. I like the potential acquisition a lot here because the opposing team have to adjust their defensive plans with the Warriors at the center position. And looking at the Pacers' entire roster, they don't need Baca at all. The team has Miles Turner, Daniel Thais, and James Johnson in their front court, so it makes perfect sense for Indiana to buy out Ibaka. Now, here is something interesting. I also have the Warriors targeting Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers, but there are some conflicting information right now regarding this. According to this report here from the Cavaliers Nations, quote, Additionally, Kevin Love is unlikely to be traded despite being out of rotation. Love may wind up on the bio market, Matt Moore of Action Network reported. However, there is another report from ESPN that just came out saying that Cavaliers not expecting contract buyout with Kevin Love. And the reason being, quote, we just didn't feel like anything was going to really move the needle for us and we could have made a move that was lateral, multiple moves that were lateral that I didn't think would made us better. Funny enough, as a Warriors fan, I've been wanting Kevin Love for a while, especially with the fact that his prototype and skill sets perfectly fit with the Warriors system. I was actually a proponent of the trade idea of exchanging Clay Thompson for Kevin Love, but of course, looking at it now, it's really smart that the Warriors did not make that trade. With now Kevin Love's status in the air, I don't know what will exactly happen with it, but I will keep my close eye on this and update you guys if anything happens in the near future. Lastly, I have the Warriors targeting Nerlens Noel of the Detroit Pistons. Now, after acquiring James Wiseman from the Warriors yesterday, Pistons are loaded with big men and Nerlens Noel is likely the odd man out, especially with the slow usage in this rotation. For the Warriors, after exchanging Wiseman for GP2, the team desperately needs more depth on the front court. Noel at 8 or 28, although didn't fully redeem his talent, is still a decent rim protector who was averaging over 2 balls per game just 2 years ago with the Knicks, who should be over 60% on the court. Currently, Noel has a cap hit of $9.2 million and that makes absolutely no sense for the Pistons, not only from a contract perspective but also a team structure angle, so it's very likely that he'll be bought out soon. If that were to happen, I really hope the Warriors hop on that opportunity right there and get him to the bay. Alright guys, that's all we got for today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Which bio candidate do you want the most? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and follow me on social media with all the links in the description box down below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.